possess us, Holy Spirit. Possess us, Holy Spirit. Possess us, God. Not just a bit, not just a piece. Lord, I don't want to tithe my life to you. I don't want to tithe my life to you, God. I don't want to give you a portion, Lord. I want to give you everything, God. And Lord, though it's a mystery, it's such a crazy, crazy mystery you would stoop so low to use human beings. It's such a mystery. It's such a mystery, God. And although I cannot understand it with my mind, my heart says yes. Jump in the river of your holy 
Could you please teach us that? Could you teach us that? Teach us the secret of the secret place. Holy is the Lamb. Holy, holy. Would you will?
us and change us, Lord. I thank you for Christ, for the nations, Lord. I thank you for all these students that are just laying their lives down for your glory. That were so yielded that they came here. I thank you, Lord, for all the staff and the faculty, for the Lindsay family, God, for the legacy, for the love, for the faith, for the tenacity, for the courage, for all that went ahead, Lord, for those that made a way that we could have a place here tonight to be undone again. Lord, we're so aware of what, a, what an amazing, massive team of little lives that were laid down that made it possible for us to be in this sweet, tender, right now and Lord I'm so grateful because I know that I know that I know I can do nothing without you Jesus yes. hey <laughs> that's so easy to understand but I thank you Lord that in your wisdom and in your beauty, it shows that we could do nothing without the body of Christ. Wow. <laughs> wow. Lord, I want to love like you. I want to love your body like you love your body. I want to love your body like you love your body. I want to love your people like you love your people. God, any way, Lord, any way, Lord, any way you need to take out, even now, even right this moment, just take it out, anything. Anything, Lord, right this moment that doesn't bring you pleasure, God, just rip it out, take it out. It doesn't matter what it looks like. <laughs> just go ahead, Lord, because <laughs> you know what you're doing. So I trust you. And I thank you, and I thank you, Holy Spirit, show Shakaraba for the tap. <laughs> the tap. I feel the tap. Yes, Lord, I feel the tap. So <laughs> help me. Thank you, you do. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. You do. <laughs> I'm pausing as you know, Lord, because you're God. I'm pausing <laughs> to listen <laughs> because <laughs> That's a really good thing to do when it comes to you. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. Um <laughs> I'm happy. I'm so happy. You can sit or you can kneel or you can dance. It's all good. You can do whatever the Lord leads you to do. It's such a beautiful free house. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. Can you guys come back after? You can? You don't mind? Huh? Yay! I love that. I love that. Are you guys happy? Are you hungry for Jesus? Do you want more? I'm so, I'm so hungry and just, I'm just so in love with him. And I'm so happy to be here. And I so honor 
this house. I honor the Lindsay family. I honor all the team here, and I'm just undone. And thank you for freedom. That's, do you know, that's amazing. Freedom. They didn't even give me a schedule, which can be dangerous, however, however. <laughs> but... <laughs> I'm just asking Holy Spirit for some clarity right here. Mm, more, Lord. <laughs> to read a scripture. Revelation 22. I love the different translations. We mostly work in Makonde, Makua, Yao, and Wani in Portuguese. Yeah. So I just, I love, I just love the word. I love all the translations. And so I'll be sharing from different ones just because it helps people. There's heart languages. Heart languages. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life flowing with water clear as crystal. Continuously, 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 continuously. I want to emphasize that. Continuously. Flowing, continuously pouring, continuously flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Who's the Lamb? Who's the Lamb? Jesus is the Lamb of God. So the river of God's flowing from the Lamb of God. And it's continuously flowing from the Lamb of God, the throne of God and of the Lamb. Oh, Rakashaya, the river's flowing, and it's flowing, flowing, flowing. And we know this is Eden restored. It is and is not yet. There's a place where we enter in now, and we're still waiting. But here we go. Let's go in as deep as we can go. Do you want to go as deep as we can go? Hi. Me too. <laughs> I love it. I'm like a little child. I just, I'm like a little child. I'm getting lower. As I get older, I'm just getting lower, like more childlike. <laughs> I know that scares people, but it works as long as you have a whole lot of help. <laughs> hey, I'm so serious. You need so much help. The river was flowing in the middle of the street of the city, and on either side of the river was a tree of life with its 12 kinds of ripe fruit according to each month of the year. Do you want that kind of fruitfulness? Yeah. Supernatural fruitfulness? Yeah. Yes? You want that kind of fruit? Okay, I'm seeing a picture here. Have you ever seen a fruit tree strive? Like, have you ever seen that? No. You haven't seen a fruit tree strive? What is a what does a fruit tree look like to you? <laughs> yeah.
nother place. Holy. It's a whole nother place. What would it look like to be like a fruit tree that bears fruit 12 months of the year? If, if, it's, if it's all about you trying to make it happen, that just sounds crazy, painfully, miserably exhausting. That sounds so exhausting that it freaks me out to think about it. Hey. But if we're abiding, like we're just, we're just dividing. And, and, and our roots are so deep, we're just so deep and we're abiding, we're abiding, we're abiding in the vine, we're abiding, we're abiding in the vine and we're, we're just totally fixed on Jesus and we understand who he is and, and we understand that we're, we're, just, we're just a piece, a piece, a little, a little one, a little piece of this beautiful body and yet, at the same time, we're understanding there's no limit to the fruitfulness that can flow out of the life of a little laid down lover of God. But so often we like hinder, we hinder it because we try to whip it up. We try to make it happen. Hurry up, whip, put it, put it, put it, put it. And then we get exhausted in the midst of it because we're trying to whip it up. Just yieldedness is a much better place. And I'm on a journey. I'm on a journey, and I'm going to tell you a little bit of my journey. I'm on this journey. I've been on this journey since I was 16. I'm a fell in love with Jesus. He met me. He met me. I fell in love with him. I was baptized in the Holy Ghost. And it was totally just full throttle. And um, I mean, I'm, I'm still full throttle. That's the way it is. I'm like, I'm more in love now. This is the exciting thing when you get older and I can look out and see you guys. You're just Amazing, you're beautiful. This is one of my favorite places to come. I love being here because you're actually going to go. You're going to go to all this world and just preach this glorious gospel. It's so beautiful. But as I get older, I, I get to I get to say, he's he just. He's just more alive to me, and I'm more in love with him than I ever knew was possible. And that love just keeps growing and growing and growing and growing. I'm over my head, over my head in love with him. That's just the way it is. I can't help myself. I can't help myself. He's just so good, I can't help myself. But sometimes I try to help myself with something that I shouldn't be trying to help myself with. Do you understand? I'll tell you a story that'll help. So <laughs> I think, I think to myself, self, you're yielded. You're a yielded little self, a yielded little lover. You've, you're yielded. You're yielded. I tell myself I'm yielded. And then COVID came. And when COVID came, I was so relieved. That sounds weird. I wasn't relieved by the sickness or the suffering. I was relieved by the fact that I didn't have to get on a plane. That was the best thing ever in my mind. I live in a war zone in Northern Mozambique. It's the most joyful place I could ever be. I love it. I love being there. I love learning from my brothers and my sisters who are walking with God and teach me the way. The country adopted me. 
I didn't adopt them, they adopted me, they took me in. And it's the greatest privilege in my life to walk with my brothers, especially now in the midst of a war. Greatest privilege of my life. It's hard to understand how grateful I feel that I get to be there and live there for such a time as this. It's just joy unspeakable and full of glory. At the same time, it's tears and sorrow and I've lost more friends in the last four years who have died. I've stayed in all of their huts or yards, in all of their huts and yards, village after village, burned to the ground, suffering, crucifixions, beheadings, pain, excruciating pain beyond anything that I could even understand in the past. And at the same time, it's the greatest harvest that we've ever seen. And my greatest joy to walk with my brothers and sisters and hear the stories and hold the broken and weep with those who weep. And so knowing what you just heard and the fact that miracle, miracle fact, I'll, I'll tell you a tiny bit of it, a miracle fact, I was in, I, I was traveling a third of my life for 25 years, a third of my life around the world, 130 nations, and I, I really, I was really thrilled that I got to do it. I, I started out really grouchy about it, didn't want to ever leave Mozambique even for a day, used to weep when I got on a plane, like, oh! That's it. The Lord finally just zippy na boca. He speaks to you like that. Zippy na boca. Stop. You need to stop. I called you. I want you to be joyful about it. So I was like, okay, I'll be joyful about it. Do you, you ever do that? Like, yes, Lord. Here I am, joyful. And so when COVID hit and everything shut down, just before it shut down, I was in I was in Malaysia, and then I flew to Hong Kong. That meeting was shut down. There's a little group of people there, and you know, we were, no one here has ever felt like this, but we were arrogant about it, you know. I was, um, we were, our people, whatever. We were not saying any of you ever had these thoughts, but we were like, we're, we're never gonna, we're never gonna, it's not gonna touch us. Hallelujah, the blood of Jesus. We're not gonna get touched by this at all. It's not gonna affect us at all, hallelujah. You know, that's just uh, just being honest. And uh, we, we just claimed it. <laughs> and uh, I was about to speak in a stadium in Philippines and they were claiming it. And they, we did, we claimed it. They were on the phone, people were fasting <laughs> since the day it started. And they, the, the people, you know, so I, they said, we're not canceling, we're not canceling. We're, you just come, anyway, fly to Philippines. It's okay, it's okay, it's all gonna happen. Stadium's gonna be full, nothing's gonna happen. And I, I land there and the Lord's like, uh-uh, uh-uh not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And the hosts are like, it's happening, it's happening, it's happening. And the Lord's like, mm-mm, no, it's not. And they, they called me into a room. We're just going to like have a pre-meeting prayer before we go in because it's going to happen. And I'm like, I'll, I'll go to the prayer meeting. But uh, I'm not sure, you know, what I, I just... I don't know what I'm going to say, but anyway, it's not happening. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> and, uh, but it's, it's hard when something's not happening that you planned for so long and you spent a lot of money on and a lot of prayer on and a lot of fasting on and a lot of trusting and a lot of Holy Spirit leading, Yay! apparently. Woo! 
And so it's very challenging when that happens. And, and I was in that meeting and, and I had a dear friend who helps me with me and somebody had upgraded my ticket, but her ticket wasn't upgraded. And in that meeting, the Lord said to me, buy her a business class ticket. And I was like, oh, that's a lot of money. That we're not talking about a special business class fare or I can't connive it with my points. Like, you know, I was u- using my natural brain to think, well, that's, you know, we work with the poor Lord. That's a lot, that's a lot of money. And I heard him very clearly, buy her a business class ticket. So I called Shelly. I said, I know it's going to cost a bomb, but just get her a business class ticket. I don't know why. All I know is we need to do it. And we need to do it now, right now, right now. And then I just told him, I said, I got to go. 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 The president announced the whole country was shutting down. You remember that? And had I not bought her a business class ticket, she would have been stuck there for months and months and months and months because there were lines of people all around the airport, lines and lines of people trying to get on a plane. But because I had that ticket, we were able to go. Then I'm in California. I flew to California. And I'm in the house, my sister sister and I. And I'm... I'm in my room there and the Lord said go 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 and I was like what go 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 really clearly and I'm still trying to think I'm yielded (laughs) I'm super yielded God but I'd like to spend a couple of days with my sister and my sister's freaking out because things are closing down there and everybody's freaking out. And, and I hear the Lord, go, go, go. And I'm like, thinking I'm yielded. And, and, and then I just said, hands up. You know, you ever do that? Yeah, like yeah. somebody's going to yeah. kill you. <laughs> so you're going to die. Might as well let it be the Lord because there's resurrection power with the Lord. So, so I'm like, Lord. And I, I remember throwing, and I'm super neat. I like neat, I like things like neat, and I like to pack my stuff in these little packing cubes, and, and it needs to be neat because then I can find it when I get to the next place for one day. And I want it all to be neat. And, and I'm not feeling the neat coming on. All I know is go. And I'm feeling, just throw it in there. Just toss it in the bag. And I, and I get an Uber. And I go to LAX. And I forgot my passport. I went that fast. And my sister, you know, she she's... She gets nervous, not like anybody else does, but she'll get nervous if she knows that she has to get somewhere really, really fast and it's really, really important and and she has to be there and she has to be there now. And and so I call her, I said, don't drive, do not drive, do not drive, do not drive. I love you, do not drive. I said, I'll pay for the Uber, get in the Uber, bring me my passport. And everything was shut down. Like people were there and, the, and there was someone behind the counter. I'm sharing the gospel. Everybody's totally open. Everybody's open to hearing the gospel. Like they're terrified. Yeah, talk about Jesus. People are crying. I'm like, I, I, I just like the best opportunity ever. And she's crying. People are crying. Everybody's, the Uber drivers cry. It's awesome. I mean, God uses everything. He said that. He works all things together for the good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And so I'm just like, oh, thank you, Diane. I love you. I love you. love you. Give her hugs. And, and they're like, y- you're not, you probably, they're, you're probably not going to get on. The planes are getting canceled. I said, no, I'm going. I'm going home. I'm going home. I'm going home. And, and I'm just like, shakarabaka. Just trust in you, Jesus. I'm walking, I'm praying, I'm walking and praying. Land in Washington, D.C., there's no fuel for any planes. They said, there's no fuel. And I said, Lord, every time you send us places, there's an assignment. 
and, and it looks like a delay, but it's an assignment. So what's my assignment? He said, walk and pray over Washington, D.C. Walk and pray. You're in the airport. Walk and pray. So I'm just like praying, and I'm praying, and I'm walking, and I'm praying, and I'm walking, and I'm praying. And if he tells me to stop for somebody and hold them uh, with a mask on and a sideways, I do it. People were terrified. I'm just walking and praying. They, they, can't, they kept saying no, no. And then finally they said, it's not happening. It's not going. I said, well, it is going because I'm going, because I'm going home because the Lord spoke to me. And, and I, I listened and I got in that Uber and I didn't delay too much. Forgot my passport, got my passport, got on the plane, and they're going to get fuel. I don't care if they have to create it. Because there's going to be fuel because i got to get home. And I ended up in another nation. And everybody was freaking out. And people were beating each other in the airport. Because the fuel finally came. And they were beating each other up like... It was chaos. There were hundreds and hundreds and actually thousands of people jammed around. People were screaming, crying. People were knocking each other. And, and I was just standing there like, okay, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do? And, and I would just find people to hold. Just found some YWAMers. <laughs> I found some, I found somebody from Wycliffe. I found some nationals from the nation. And, and they said, well, no flights are leaving. Everything's closed. And I was like, hallelujah, I'm on assignment. I ended up in that nation for four days meeting national leaders in that nation like on assignment, four days, on assignment, on assignment, on assignment, on assignment. I'm thinking, Lord, what, I don't know, what is it? What is it? And, and I remember finally, when they finally said, there's one flight that's going to go to Johannesburg and Maputo. And I'm like, I'm on it, I'm on it. I got on that flight. I got to Maputo. And you know what they said? All foreigners get back on the plane. I'm finally home. It's been now six days to get there. Six days. And they said, all the foreigners back on the plane. I said, I'm not a foreigner, so I'm not getting on the plane. I don't look very Mozambican, but I know who I am. And so I'm like, no, I'm not getting on the plane. And when I need to be stubborn, I can be really, 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 really ask my husband, we're all fawns, though. If I, if I need to be stubborn, I'll be stubborn. Hey. So I'll be stubborn. And I sat there just like this. The lady comes up to me, speaks to me in English. I pretend I do not understand. So, I don't, I didn't lie. I just... spoke to me in Shangana, pretended I didn't understand. She said a few words, you know. Woo. And then she starts speaking to me in Portuguese, like, get back, you know, oh, you know, get on that plane. I said, no. No, no, and no. I'm not getting on the plane. I'm Mozambicana. I'm not getting on the plane. My family's here. My dogs are here. My husband's here. Most of my children are here. And I'm not getting on that plane. You can call whoever you want. Call the president. Call the governor. Call, call the street kids. Do whatever you like. Call whoever you like. Because I'm not getting on that plane. She said, well, the plane, there's only one last plane to Pemba, where I live in northern Mozambique. She said, it's already leaving. It's leaving. It's leaving in like five minutes, and you better get on the plane because you're going to be stuck here, and we're not letting you in. And I said, 
you are letting me in and you'll just have to hold the plane because you just have to hold the plane. So as long as you want to sit here and discuss it, you're going to have to hold the plane longer and people are going to be frustrated because I need to get home. So you're going to have to hold the plane. Would you like to hold the plane? How long would you like to hold the plane? Because I'm here. It took me a long time to get here and I'm here. And, and then I pulled out Rollin calls it my secret weapon, which is, I, I started sobbing. I could not help myself. Like it was, I was, it was like, I, I can't, I can't, I gotta get home. And I'm, I'm weeping and I'm, I'm, and then she's like, oh, calm, 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 you know, calm down, calm down, calm down, mama. I think it calm down, you know, all, all of course in local dialects and Portuguese, they were, I was like, I can't calm down. I gotta get home. What are, this is too much. You gotta get me home. And just, they called a few people. And um, she's like, I don't understand you. Cause I'm, I'm pale, you know. And uh, shh, just in case you didn't know. Um, so I'm, I'm like, she's, she's confused. She's like super confused by me. She doesn't get it. And then I get it. She finally just like, okay, mama, come on, come on. The plane's waiting. I'm like, yes. And so I walk, I walk through and there's the baggage claim, you know, and there's one bag left. It's mine because they made all the Chinese that were trying to get in and all the other nations that were trying to get in to get, finish their work contracts. They made them all get on the plane. That plane was already gone. <laughs> so it's me. And all these um, young men who were all street kids when I was there in that area for eight years, they're all, they see me coming in and everybody's trying to leave, right? except for a few people trying to get their stuff from other nations. They're trying to get their stuff and go. So here I am coming in and they're like, Mama, we knew you'd get home. You made it, you made it, you made it. I said, almost. And they're like, and she, the woman starts crying. This lady, she starts crying. And she's like, you really are a mama. I said, well, yeah, I didn't. Like I told you I'm a mama. What do you think? What if, was I just making it up? She's like, oh, come on, come with me. And they, they didn't do any x-rays or anything. They're just like, <laughs> the plane had been waiting way too long. I got on and um, if I hadn't have listened to God, if I hadn't heard God, I would have been stuck outside of my nation for like close to 18 months. But because I listened, I got to be in the, in the midst, the greatest height of the turmoil and the crisis that our nation had been going through, the greatest, the most villages burned, the most difficulty, the most challenge. And, and, and I would have missed, I would have missed that opportunity to be in solidarity with people that, that I love, I would have missed it. Do you understand? Totally would have missed it if I hadn't obeyed. So all of that introduction is to get to this place. I thought I was yielded. I thought I was yielded. I was kind of happy about the fact that I got home, that I'm yielded, that, that I'm doing the Lord's will there. And until, until things started to open up just a little bit, open up. And then people who allowed you to zoom, 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 zoom. I didn't know what zooming was until COVID hit. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Everybody, zoom, zoom. Now you can just zoom all the time. I said, you know, we do other things besides zoom. Like we're out there. And so I'd be out there like eight, ten hours with my brothers in the heat, feeding the hungry, reaching the hurting, holding the dying, and, and bringing out these solar bottles. And I'd get home, and it was like whiplash, zoom. And you'd like have to brush your hair and stuff. 
like, I'm not ready for this. But it's still easier than getting on a plane for two and a half days. So hallelujah, zoom, zoom, zoom. And finally, it's like, we're not zooming. This is live. I'm like, oh, Jesus. I think I'm yielded, but it's like, oh, Jesus, it's live again. Because I'm happy not, I'm just happy being there. You know, I, I, I know most people that see me here don't really understand, but I literally, I've been preaching on the streets in the dirt for since I was 16 and, and I'm out there and there's no microphones and there's no razzmatazz and lights and 859 big there like I'm I'm out there and nobody even knows what time it is except for the sun's gonna go down and so there you better move because you might get shot that kind of thing no joke. I mean, it sounds funny, but you have to laugh. If you don't laugh, you're dead, you know. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, that's a good point. You should write, nobody wrote anything down, but that was a good one. But hey, the joy of the Lord, your strength, you know. And so, so there I am. And if you have to get your kids and, and do whatever, pay your babysitter, kiss your spouse on the... You can go, but don't all leave at once. Like, just like a few and a one, and then out. Otherwise, I'll be worried. I had, no, I will say, I will tell. Look, Holy Spirit works like that with me. One time, I was in, in my church in, in uh, Cabo Delgado, and, and about 300 people ran off at one. I thought, what did I do? Like, did I butcher something with the language I must have done something this is bad you know I remember my son um, he was playing guitar and he's like he loves his guitar <laughs> he loves his guitar and he drops it and I'm like that is not like him and then he goes and beats something on the ground I'm like that's not like him either and he's killing this black mamba snake yeah, that's in my church. That's why 300 people got out and ran, or more. Like, I couldn't count as how many there were. Like, but yeah, so he, he killed that black mamba, and I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to preach, you know? And um, then I'll look down. This is not a vision. This is my church Sunday morning. So I'm like looking down, and right, there's another one right in front of me. So I leap off the stage, and I'm beat. Like, that's what I do, because I'm a snake killer, and, and I, I can do it. So, yes, come on, that's right. Two people were getting married, a man and a woman, a man and a woman. And I stabbed the snake body, because they are still freaking out. I stabbed the snake body, I lifted up. And I cried out in, in our language, we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. And this thing, this is, this is such a important, Holy Spirit's good like this, how he weaves you around. You know, other people have notes and quotes, which is awesome, I admire it. It's just not how he's obviously led me. <laughs> so here's the snake and it's, it's moving and it's like, ooh, it's so ugly. And it has no head and people are still afraid. Oh yeah. Hey! Whack off that serpent's head. So you lift it up. And then you know what? All those people, however many hundreds, there were hundreds that ran. They, they're Mozambicanas. Like they get over things quickly. Unlike y'all would have, never mind. I'm gonna be nice. They just all came right back in. They just came right back in. The snakes are dead. Come on, get on with the wedding. Snakes were there to kill, kill intimacy. Stop the wedding. This devil's still the same all the time. He's just so stupid, stupid. He's always trying to stop the wedding. He's trying to stop intimacy. He's trying to fear, bring fear into people. Fear that paralyzes them or makes them run. Hey. Holy is the Lamb. No fear. No 
fear. Shokaraba. So there, I got home excited. And now I have to go. And I was in, I remember. I was like, okay, it's okay, because I'm going to see my two blonde children and my two blonde grandbabies. I'm going to see them. All the rest of them are with me already, so I get to see them a lot. But these were over in California, so I figure, okay, I'll go to Florida so I can see my kids because that's worth it, and I, I guess I could still preach somewhere outside of Mozambique, maybe. I thought, and, and I said to the Lord, I'm so thankful to you, Jesus. I'm so, have you ever done this? No, it's just me. I'm like, Thank you, Jesus. Salama shatarama. I mean, I, I'm always praying in tongues. It, it, it frightens people, but I do it quietly when I, you know, walk in through airports and such. Not always, but you should always be honest. But usually, I, I'm, I'm pretty cool. Most times. And, and so, I'm just like, thank you, Lord. I'm so happy, you know, that... You called me when you called me to the nations. And, and um, uh, I told PA today on the, the podcast, like with the three blind people that saw, and I thought I was, I had a Catherine Coleman anointing and God told me I was blind. That was, that was cool. Um, I didn't want to be blind. And then he told me, he showed me the nations and the people and told me to go a third of the time. And so I did, and I went. And, 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 and so now I think I've done it because I, I figured 20-some years, 25 years I've been traveling, like I have millions of miles. And, and I'm thinking, I, I, I'm done. Thank you, Jesus. That was an amazing season. I got, I got to see the world. Hallelujah. Now I get to give my life. And, and I never know, like, if I get to come home because Al Shabaab's everywhere and they don't like me. Uh, that's an understatement. They really, really, really don't like me. They're now, they're called Isis Mozambique. They don't like me. I'm not their favorite person. And I don't blend. So, so I, I, I go out and, and it's like I tried to blend. I, you could blend a bit. You could blend more than you. But you could, you could blend if you took your glasses off, perhaps. But you, oh yeah, you could do it. But me, I'm not blending. One time I tried to blend when I got shipwrecked. I got shipwrecked, and I ended up in Natiti. You don't know Natiti, but you look Mozambicano, so I'm relating here. Natiti, I'm Natiti, and, and Natiti's not a great spot to get um, dropped off, you know. But I was shipwrecked, I was tired, so finally I get to Natiti. I was like five boats later, no joke. No time to tell that story. I know what time it is. So I'm like in Natiti, and this is, this is you're, you're going to laugh. Yeah. So I, I decide I'm going to blend. So I take a couple on ice. You know, and I'm walking, and and I'm with my brothers, and and so I'm walking like through this, and this is the funniest part of the story. We all had on life jackets. We had on life jackets. You blend with a life jacket. We're just funny, you know, but I was trying to blend and it's just, the life jackets gave it away. (laughs) 
you make it, you know, you got to the other side. I was really excited, got to the other side. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to go, and it's going to be amazing, and I think I'm so yielded, and I've been stoned and beaten and thrown in jail and shipwrecked. Yes, check, 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 check. That was a cool box to check in my, in my mind, really, like, yeah, been shipwrecked. Cool. As long as you get to the other side. But I, I remember that night. I said, no snakes, no snakes. I mean, I didn't want one on my hand. I could pray out the venom, but I didn't want it on my hand. So we had fire ants instead. That was rough. But anyway, that's a whole nother story, a whole nother message. I always figure, though, it takes me two and a half days to get here so you all can stay for a few more minutes. That's just kind of how I feel. It's just, it's like, so here's my yieldedness. I'm, I'm, I'm there, and I'm in Florida, and I'm thanking God how I don't have to do it anymore. After he already told me he was sending me, be joyful about it. But after COVID, I thought we were done. And I was, hallelujah, set free to just stay in northern Mozambique the entire time and never had to go anywhere except to see my grandkids. And the Lord said very clearly, as I called my assistant, told her, but I said, don't worry, you still have a job. There's Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. And so I tell her, I actually told her, I'm not traveling anymore, but you still have a job. Zoom, zoom. Just put it down there. You got a, it's a lot of details. She's like, okay. So I get there and I'm, I'm gonna tell the, the people there, just, you know, just as a side note, that it was a joy going because God gave me joy, but now I'm not going. And, 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 the, and, and we're worshiping. And the glory of God falls in the room. Like, we know he's omnipotent, omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient God. But you know the difference when he... <laughs> we're starting to get there tonight, you know? When he, when he just come and he just like, oh, yes. And it's best to get low. Like, well, like, that's good time to get low. Low, low. This is not the time to dance. <laughs> and, and so I'm, I'm just feeling this heavy, weighty glory. And I hear the Lord, how dare you? It wasn't a nice, Abba, Daddy, God, snuggle up, sweetie. I love you. It wasn't that. There was no snuggle up. Snuggle up, come on up here, snuggle, snuggle. You know, that's a lovely thing to happen, but this was not that. He said, how dare you tell me what to do with you? I was like, uh oh, uh oh, ah, uh, ooh. He said it again, how dare you tell me what to do? How dare you tell me what to do with you? You already died. You already gave me your life. Do you want it back? And I was like, sorry. Oh, and then he began to say a few more things. And that was the end of me. I was a puddle. I was a puddle. I was a puddle there, a puddle. And there was no fixing that puddle. I was a puddle of tears because I realized that I was still fussing. That I thought that somehow I knew, somehow that I, I could just tell him what to do with me. As if I told him to send me to all the places he'd sent me. What I did was yield myself to God and to the best of my ability say yes to him, but I did not expect that as I was trying to pick what seemingly seemed like the greatest challenge to most people, my great joy, that God would still ask me to come here 
to come to the Western world, the first world, Eastern world, to come to South American world one third of my time. I did not understand why. This is the point that is hard to explain. The reason I couldn't understand is because I know me. Because I'm just a little mama. And I know that I have nothing special in myself. And so my great confusion with the whole thing was, why would you, why would you, why would you ask me to go? Like, there's tens of thousands of other people that can do that. And then I realized what he spoke that day was so clear. And we all know the scripture. The Lord quotes the scripture back to us, doesn't he? He does, to me anyway. He speaks to me through his word all the time. And he said, I'm the potter. You're the clay. I'm the potter. You're the clay. <laughs> and then he began to be pretty clear about the fact that he needed to smash me again. Right there. In front of a whole lot of people. And he said, there's no bargaining. No bargaining. I, I just, I asked for forgiveness. I sobbed, I asked for forgiveness and I said, Lord, I will never tell you what to do again with me. And then I think I'm there and then something else will come up. Something else will come up and I'll still find a wiggle in me. Does anybody still have a wiggle left? I have a, I, 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 I'm 62. I'm still wiggling sometimes. I'm still wiggling and I'm like, I don't have any more wiggle. I don't have any more wiggle. I am yielded to God. I'm yielded to God. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. What? what? What's it going to take? Everything. Everything. God's going to have his way. There were two. Remember the story in Luke? Do you remember the beginning of Luke? Two, two circumstances where a baby was going to be born. Do you remember it? It's a beautiful Bible school. Come on. It's okay. You can talk. What, what, what? What's the story? Who's the first guy? You're scaring me. You. Okay. Zachariah. I know you know it. It's open book too. Open phone, open book. Just don't text. So, so it's Zechariah and, and the angel shows up and, and tells him he's going to have a son, right? And he's confused and he's like, oh, 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 that can't happen. I'm old. I'm old. And my wife's really old. And, and, and he's like talking about his wife being old and he's old and he's like, it's not happening. But somehow, um, you know, he, he collapsed there and they had to pull him out. And, but he cooperated in some manner, as we know. And so his wife becomes pregnant. And so he can't talk. There are two ways you're going to go about this. Like God's going to have his will in his way. With or without you. With or without you. God's going to have his will in his way. With or without you. The whole book's coming true. All of it. All of it. All of it. With or without you. With you being a voice. Without you being a voice. You can yield yourself to God. You can do your own thing. Either way, the baby's being born. Either way, God's will's happening because God's God and you're not. Hooray. Holy is the land. So Mary, she's, she's there. She gets the same angel coming to her. Her circumstance is even more freaky than the other brother. Right? She's a teenage virgin. The angel says, you're going to become pregnant and, and you're going to carry the Son of God. And, and she doesn't understand. She's freaked out. I'm sure she's freaked out. How is she going to tell her parents? Freaked out, kind of freaked out. How is she going to tell her fiancé? How is she going to tell her parents? She's freaked out, but she says to the angel, I don't understand. And he says, Holy Spirit is going to fall on you. 
Now, this is where I feel we're supposed to go. I, I actually feel like this is a good time. I'm not sure what else will happen, but maybe stand up. So, Holy Spirit's going to come on you, fall on you. And the Holy Spirit's going to overshadow you. And you're going to carry the Son of God. And her response, holy, was very different from Zechariah. John was still born. But her response was, be it unto me. Just be it unto me, as you have said. There's fruitfulness, fruitfulness. The leaves of the trees of life are for the healing of the nations. Every curse will be broken and no longer exist for the throne of God and the Lamb will be there in the city. His loving servants will serve him. They will see constantly his face. That was the greatest moment as we adored the Lord, as we were singing that face to face. And his names will be, his name will be on their foreheads. Night will be no more. They will never need the light of the sun or the lamp because the Lord God will shine on them. And they will reign as kings forever and ever. More, Lord. Lord, we want that fruitfulness. There's, there's this one more. Holy, Holy Spirit's here. More, Lord. More, Lord. I want to ask the worship team to come, but you don't need to be loud and drowned out um, what's happening. I mean that with great love and respect because you're the most awesome worship team. It's just there's something about um, the response. And, and there's something about our response. So, wow. When we... I feel to say this because of who you are and where I am, and it's such an honor to be here. In northern Mozambique, in many places, and we're working in many nations now, there's thousands and thousands of us. It's not just, it's never about one person. It's a whole huge team. It's the body of Christ. But in northern Mozambique, we had a, harvest school and a Bible school, and we combined them. And, and, and the size of the school is about like this, right? And we're all there, and the glory of God fell so powerfully for so many years, and it was so glorious, and we had to carry people to their rooms, and, and, and people were sent all over the world to carry this glorious gospel. And the Mozambicanos, some of them were sent but most of them remained in Mozambique. And it was, um, it was a group about like this size, you see. Whoa. So why I'm sensing um, very strongly to speak to you about this is, is a group about this size. There's hundreds and hundreds of Mozambicanos and hundreds and hundreds of people from about 40 nations. And in a moment, all the foreigners, the internationals, lost their visas in a moment. They had like, I think it was two days to get on a plane. Our movement had to cover all the finances for that. 
That was challenging, I'll tell you. And we flew them to South Africa because they had to leave immediately. There was no stop go. There was no questioning. There was no negotiating. We tried. There was nothing we could do. They were suddenly meant they had to leave. Why? Because the government didn't want responsibility for all those internationals during a war. And the war was heating up. This was about Four and a half years ago, the war was heating up, and they didn't want responsibility for people of other nations that would be um, killed and kidnapped, and so they, that was their way of dealing with it, send them all away. And the Mozambicanos are there, and they're like watching this happen, and they're, they're just like half our student body, half of our student body just was sent away. I mean, you can fuss at the devil or you can understand God's in control and they were being ekballed out. They were being sent out because God knew what he was doing and he knew his plan and he was raising up nationals, nationals, raising up nationals, nationals, nationals in the time of war to shine in a way that the world has never seen. And as this killing and beheading and crucifixion started to increase, my brothers who had who had been in Bible school for years, they would come for three months a year, they'd go back four years running, and then we'd do a fifth year, Emmy Emmy, Muslim Bikanu, Muslim Missionari Muslim Bikanu, Emmy Emmy. Anyway, they'd come back and say so they start coming to the base, the glory garden base where they'd been trained and they're coming and I I look at my brothers as they come we it was hidden we were very angry that the road was blocked off by a grocery store the first grocery store we ever had we were upset with that because they took our main access but God knew what he was doing because he hid us he hid us in that spot so there we are and these brothers start coming. Shamoko, Shumbulu, Jose, Joaquin. They come and, and they're my brothers. They're my dear brothers. They're my friends. They're my, my colleagues. Some of them had 50 churches. Some of them 30 churches. Some of them had six churches. They're coming and they're, and they're talking and, and I'm listening. And I pull out the plastic chairs. I want to honor them. They sit and they tell me how many bodies they counted as they walked. The only place they knew to walk, it's the same province. It'd be like if Texas blew up with a war. It's the same province. There's only one province at war in my nation. There's one. It's Cabo Delgado where we live. So it'd be like if Texas suddenly, all the people that weren't um, from America were sent away in a day, and the rest of you are all here wondering what's going on, what to do. And there's a war breaking out, and and people are dying, and and villages and towns are burning. Right? This is this is the reality. And I want you to remember this tonight as you lay your life down again in a yielded place beyond your yieldedness before. We did not expect what was to come. We did not like it with our minds, our hearts. We did not like it. We wept. We sobbed. We grieved. As church after church, village after village, pastor after pastor, friend after friend, Almost a million internally displaced people started coming to our little city, which is in the middle, 20 minutes from us. They burned the village to the ground. My friend Marcy's been there many times. That was one of the places we went with that boat. They, they, they beheaded so many people. They burned down everything. They, they, they would just 
tor- the torture that's going on right now. And so when you see me and you look at me and you can see somebody who has joy and somebody who, who's able to worship and dance and rejoice and is still sane, that's, maybe you're not sure about that. It's important for the moment that you hear that in the context of what we're facing right now and why it was so hard for me to yield again when he asked me to come here. Because when you're in that situation, all you want to do is comfort those who mourn and hold the hurting and the dying and feed the hungry and bring the gospel to people of, who, who, who are still not sure who Jesus is. And when every single person you speak to every single day receives Jesus easily, completely easily in a moment where they used to mock us, even as deaf ears would open, the mocking would slow down. Blind eyes would see, the mocking would slow down. But there was still so much mocking going on, but no mocking now. There's no mocking, zero mocking, zero mocking as they see a tribe of laid down lovers going four, five, six, seven, four ton trucks full of food, full of food, full of love. All the pastors, all of our churches, all of our churches were closed, all of them. And the church just grew and grew and grew and grew and grew under every tree, every bush, Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. The people who said they could never speak waited for a foreigner, some of them. They're all speaking now. They're all preaching now. They're all carrying the glorious gospel now. Hey! That's why I tell you why it's my greatest privilege. Because I don't deserve to walk with these brothers in the natural, and yet their grace is sufficient for me. And I learn every day from these guys. Every day I learn, I learn. I'm humbled, I'm humbled, I'm humbled again. Shamoko and Shulumbu came and they talked to me. And they told me about how many people different stories, different villages. And I'd say, why are, why are there so many people in your family? They said, because we found them on our way and you always said to stop for the one, so we did. So that's why we have more because they have nowhere to go and so they're here. And, and then they start shaking and sobbing with gut-wrenching sobs. It happens over and over. And Shulambu's sobbing and, and then... He's telling me how he stopped counting the bodies, the beheaded bodies, the chopped up bodies. This is my now. This is not like some vision or something that might happen. This is my now world. And he's there and he's sharing and, and he falls off his, his plastic chair and into the dirt. He's a very amazing, powerful man who, who carries so much dignity and so much glory on him. And he's just like there with gut-wrenching sobs that can't be controlled. And he's just, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I'm just, I'm speechless. So all I could think of was just put my hands on him, just lay my hands on him. And out of nowhere, he burst out laughing. I mean, laughing, laughing and laughing and laughing and laughing. And I am, I, I've been in renewal, revival. I'm married to Rolfonzo, who you know is Rolf. I know about laughter. 
I don't think this is appropriate at that point. I'm upset. I'm confused. I don't understand how this is happening. How can this man be laughing when he just told me about how he dead bodies he and his children and he lost some children on the way how how with people's heads in different parts how can this be happening and he's laughing and i i'm just saying god oh god please help me god and he says this is what it looks like the joy of the lord is your strength the joy of the lord is your strength i'm strengthening him I'm strengthening him. I'm, I'm ripping out the tor torture, the trauma, the hell of all these experiences. I'm ripping it out. And you know what he does? He leads, the, he leads the distribution outreach teams. The next guy, he starts speaking to me, and his story is even more horrific, if you can imagine. And he starts sobbing. Like, not, not just a little tear, but shaking, sobbing with the pain and the hell and the torment of it. And all of them have lost everything they own. They might have a plastic bag or a little couple on it. They've lost family members. Some have lost their wives. Some have lost our one senior pastor, four and a half year old was beheaded. And his wife went one direction, he went the other one with some of the kids. She went the other way with some of the kids. And they lost each other and we haven't found them. We could only find the father and, his, and some of the kids. The mother and the other kids are gone and the child, the four and a half year olds, beheaded. Do you understand? I could tell, I, if you don't hear this, maybe you won't understand what I believe God wants to do in this place. Christ for the nations. What he wants to do in this place is ekbala you out. He wants to send you out. He wants to send you out in all different manners, in all different professions, in all different ways. But he's looking for radical lovers who would not be afraid. The next pastor tells me his story, sobbing, then he falls to the ground. It's dirt. He falls to the ground there because our big base was closed because it's on the main road, so we can't risk anybody seeing that we're there. So God, God was in control of the road getting taken. God was totally in control. It was such a God setup. That's a sneaky Yehovah moment. So he's there, and I put my hands on him, and he starts laughing hysterically. And my, my mind's like, I thought I understood. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. How is this possible? And the Lord said, the joy of the Lord is their strength. And as he called me back, and as he asked me to come here, it's to share this with you. Your life is not your own. Your life's not your own. And you can try to wiggle and wobble and some of you think you're really yielded. And then you realize, like, like I do, I need you, Lord, to put me on the wheel again. And so... My brothers are my greatest teachers, greatest, greatest place I could ever be to learn about true laid down love and what it looks like is to walk with them 
and I no longer lead. I follow. I follow. I follow them. 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 And when I've never said this publicly, but Cover me, Lord. I'm going to say it. When, when I was in a village um, in December, you know, we because we're Mozambicanos, I'm the only one that wasn't born there, but on the outreach. So they're talking, and and it's Portuguese, but it's also Makandi Makua. It's it's Mwani, Kimwani. I don't speak Kimwani. I don't speak Makandi. But all my brothers do. We need each other. Do you understand? My brothers speak all between us. All the languages are covered. Do you understand? We're so bizarre. We think that it's just done by one or two or ten or twenty. It's not. It's all of us, the body of Christ. We need to be so willing to understand and know what's going on and, and love one another and protect one another and care for one another. And these guys, do you know what the... the you guys would think this is hellish that al Shabaab would come and chop people up, right? And put them in a pot and then tell their family members to eat them. Is that not horrible? You're not even answering that? That's not a test question. That's horrific. Is that not horrible? Like, please respond to that. When we come against the body of Christ who doesn't look like us, act like us, move like us, talk like us, walk like us, we are chewing them up. We are chewing them up. And the Lord says, stop it. They don't just kill believers in Jesus. They kill anybody that does not look like they want them to look. Even people in their own faith, if they have their hairs not the same way, the length or, or their clothes aren't exactly what they want, they kill them too. And we say, that is horrible. Is that not horrible? What are we doing when we judge our brother, our sister, when we don't see our need for the other who may speak a different language, who may look a different way, who may have a different socioeconomic background than we have? We need each other. The whole body of Christ, we need each other. And as the world shakes, we better wake up We better wake up, wake up, wake up and ask Holy Spirit to possess us and open our eyes so we can see and open our ears so we can hear. Holy is the Lamb. We need our eyes opened. We need our ears opened. If it were not for my brothers and my sister, there was one Mozambicana woman there, Ancha, Big Mama. Ancha suddenly grabs me hard. She bruised me. She said, go, mama, go. I didn't hear Holy Spirit like I heard him when he told me to get on the plane. It was Ancha. It was Ancha's voice. It was Ancha's voice I heard. Sometimes the Lord wants to speak to you through another another brother, another sister. He wants to speak to you. He wants to send somebody who knows another way, another language, another way of yielding to God that you don't know, that you don't understand. And suddenly, she grabs me and lifts me up and there are two brothers in front of me, including Shulumbu, and she woke up. And there are two brothers behind me. And there are two on either side. And 
then the rest of them surround me like a huge shield. It's not just angels. The body of Christ. They surround me. And I don't look like them. I don't look like them. But they understood Makonde. And they understood Kimwani. And they heard. And the guys there, there were lots of El Shabaab. We, we feed everybody. We don't know who's who. Everybody looks alike. We're going to get that. Let's get that little white woman. Let's get that little white woman. Because we could sell her for a whole lot of money. And my brothers, my sister, these guys had machetes and, and rocks. And they're very angry and very fierce. And these guys had already seen hell on earth. They say, they burn our houses. They kill our family members. They, they torture, but they can never rip Jesus out of our hearts. They can never burn him out of our hearts. They say that, and they mean that. They surround me, and they shield me, and they get me in my truck. And that's why I'm here today. I'm here. I'm here today. And I don't take that for granted. And I didn't leave them. They lay hands on me and sent me out. Every time I go, they lay hands on me and they send me out. And they say, be a voice. Be a voice, Mama. Be a voice. So, Holy Spirit, I don't know what's happening with this student body or the next student body or the next one or the next one, but I know you you called me to cry out, wake up, hey, wake up, 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 wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Holy is the Lamb. And this, I feel tonight and again, you need to go, go. But there has to be a space and a place today. You don't know. You don't know when you get to meet again. You don't know when you get to meet again. You don't know. You don't know when you get to meet again. You do not know. Wake up. Tonight, I feel again there's this radical place. Radical, I mean radical place. Hey. Of, of laying yourself down and asking God to crush the wiggle out of you, to break the wiggle out of you, to move the wiggle out of you, to take all the wiggle, to take all the wobble, to take all the bits that try to resurrect itself. He is the resurrector. And to, to just come and and know like we know like we know we don't just go out we don't just go out and feed the people and bring them the gospel we know that we need Holy Spirit because if we don't hear Holy Spirit we're dead we're dead we'll go to the village we'll be dead or we'll be kidnapped or we'll be beheaded or we'll be we don't know how desperately we need. We need Holy Spirit. We need Holy Spirit just to 
breathe. So if you are, are just coming tonight, go, go ahead. You can go out because this is what I want to do. I want to make room for those that, that need to spend this time with God. You need to spend this time with God. You need to spend this time. The worship team's going to come back. They're probably already here. My eyes are closed. But, I mean, you can run up to this, up here to this stage. We're not going to, we're not going to ask you to talk. We're not going to ask you to stand. We're going to ask you to get low. Get low, get low. Get low, get low. Get low, get low. You can kneel. You can prostrate yourself. Just get low. Get low. If you can't kneel, but you want to sit, then sit on the stairs. Come up. You can come up here. This is, this is, these are, I'm going to say it, and I, it's, I'm saying it because I'm hearing it. These are desperate times. And there are desperate measures that need to be taken. These are desperate times, and there are desperate measures that need to be taken. And the Lord's looking for yielded lovers. He will accomplish his will one way. He will, with or without you, he will. He will, he will, he will, he will. I know it's okay, you can come up here, you run up here, kneel down. I mean it. I, it, it and, and if you need to go, 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 and 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 maybe you need to go pray in your own room because you you just need to go. But don't. If I don't do this, then I miss. I miss what God wants me to do. My little 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 place in this place, Christ for the nations. And if my brothers agreed with me, and they did, and my sisters agreed with me, and they did, and they sent me here, they sent me here. They sent me here. Then it has to matter. Because why else would you, why else would you leave? the greatest harvest that you've ever seen, why else would you do that? That would make no sense. And God, although you don't always understand, He always makes sense. He knows what He's doing. There are lives, come on. I'm gonna keep my eyes closed. I, 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 I feel like God's dealing with people to yield in a way you've never yielded before, to lay down in a way you've never laid down before, to say to the Lord, like my brother Shumbulu Shamoko, Joaquin, she'll say, whether we live, we live, we die, we die. We live, we live, we die, we die. Oh, Rakasheya, they will never ever burn Jesus out of our hearts. They can't silence us. They can burn our churches to the ground. And they do, and they do, and they do. They can burn our churches, and the government can close all of our buildings, and they did, and they do, and they did, and they do. But they can never burn Jesus out of our hearts, and they can never stop us from sharing this glorious gospel. Nothing will stop us. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, will you love Al-Shabaab? I'm doing this with my eyes closed. Will you love Al-Shabaab? I didn't know how to love Al-Shabaab. I couldn't understand how to love Al-Shabaab. All I know is they're, they're very scary people and they're very cruel people. And I said, oh Lord, I was in a big meeting before the whole thing closed and, and, and this person said, you only have authority where you have love. And I was like, oh, I've, I, and, and, and you have to forgive. And I'm like, I already forgave. And I gave him the little list. I forgave my mother. I forgave this person. That for, He said, what about Al-Shabaab? And I said, Lord, surely, surely, Lord, you know, there's justifiable anger. And, and um, I, I don't know, Lord, come on. What are we talking about? What kind of love? Like, okay, Lord, yes, uh, I, I do. But I I don't because God's so 
pegs you and it's like, I don't know how to love them, God. I don't know how to love people that do what they do and have tortured and killed so many people that I love, Lord. I don't know how, I don't know how. And he showed me this witch doctor that I led to the Lord whose um, name is Jose and, and he came to kill me with his snakes and he was set free. Marcy was there, he was set free. And when he came to kill me, I looked at him, I just saw a tired little boy. And I told him, you're just a tired little boy. And he hissed at me and he fell to his knees and I kissed his little leper slave who he kept to sleep with. I kissed her little hands. I was kissing his little leper slave and with, I was kissing her little hands. And, and the Lord just broke in that moment and, and I, I commanded the snakes to jump into the fire and they jumped in to the fire and died. And the Lord, in that meeting, he said, um, do you remember Jose? I showed you Jose as a broken little boy, a broken little boy. I said, yes, Lord. And then he showed me Al-Shabaab. He showed me these broken little boys, these broken little boys, broken little boys who didn't know the love of a father who didn't know the love of, of a father and never knew the love of Jesus. And, and instead of anger, I felt love for them. And I asked God with weeping that he would help us to reach Al-Shabaab. And right now God's speaking to some people who live in nations where there's a lot of torture and meanness and cruelty and people of other faiths and people even of your own faith who have been cruel. And he's like, will you love them? Will you love them more, Holy Spirit? As I'm speaking, Holy Spirit's falling on people. Holy Spirit's falling on people. Holy Spirit's falling on people. I have some friends with me. Go wherever the Lord leads you and just lay hands on those the Holy Spirit's falling on. Shorabasayanaya. Please don't speak to someone, but pray. Oh, Rataya, Lord, crash in on me, break in on me. Holy Spirit, possess me. I need you to possess me, God. I don't have enough love. I don't have enough love. I don't have enough love for the church. I don't have enough love for my family. I don't have enough love for myself. I don't have enough love, Lord. I need love. I need radical love. I need you, Holy Spirit. Crash it on me. There was friendly fire that came against a van load of our pastors going to an all-night prayer meeting. They made a wrong turn. Military police thought they were Al-Shabaab and they beat my dear brothers. They're all in my discipleship group. They're in Rollins' discipleship group. They beat them mercilessly. They put AKs to their heads and they told him that was their last day on the planet. One of their eyes fell down to their cheek. Another one's arms broken. They're beaten so badly. This is in, this is in Maringanya, where we've worked for years, right outside of the prison. And they're crying out and they're saying, no, no, we're not, we're pastors, we're part of Iris, we're part of Arcoeers, we're part of Ministeru Arcoeers, we're part of Comunio Nacolieta. Call, call somebody, call somebody. And finally one of them said, wait, 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 I know these guys, I know these guys. And by the grace and miracle working power of God, the friendly fire, do you see what it's called? Friendly fire, that's what we, when we hurt our brothers and sisters who say they love Jesus and yet we say they don't and we're, it's like friendly fire. And it, we have to stop it. We must stop, we must stop chewing up our 
our brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. We, we need radical love. That's the only way the world's going to know we are believers in Jesus is through our love. Radical love flow in this place today. Radical love. What if you have a different political views from your brother? What if you have political views? What if, you, what if you're offended by someone? Oh, what does radical love look like? What does it look like? What does it look like? It doesn't look like radical fear. And it doesn't look like silence. When somebody's about to be kidnapped, We need love, Holy Spirit. We need love. The pastors were shaken. They were shaken. But because they know what it is to follow the Lamb, and because we all have been teaching one another to forgive, to forgive, to forgive, to forgive. They immediately forgave. They immediately forgave the military police, even as they were being sent to the hospital. And, and they were shaken and broken and bruised and hurting and scared. They forgave. And the next day, after the prison had been closed to us for three and a half years, because a man of another faith took over and stopped our Bible school in that prison and all our outreach in that prison. The next day they came to our base with a letter with seven names on it. The names of six of those mighty laid down lover men of God was on that letter. And that letter said, and my name was on that letter. That letter said, we are so sorry for beating you. And threatening you. And you have now have full authority to come back into the prison. Guess who filled the prison? Al Shabaab. And we have full authority to bring audio solar Bibles in their heart language. And hundreds of Al Shabaab, the broken little boys, are surrendering their lives to Christ Jesus. So whatever the worship team has as we pray, Holy Spirit will show them the words and the songs. And we're going to pray over people for radical love. And we're going to be ekballed out of Christ for the nations to the streets and cities of America, right into the political conflicts and racial conflicts, the divisions and the barriers and the pain and the suffering. We're going to be sent ones, sent ones. And we're going to go low. And we're going to go slow. And we're going to listen. We're going to listen to one another. 
listening to God got me home. Listening to my sister and brothers saved my life. There's listening. Where our ears have been dull and we have not heard one another. We haven't heard our brother. We haven't heard our sister. We haven't even asked
peace of the presence falling tonight. The same song, some of them, that we sang earlier. As you sing them again, some of you in silence on this altar, they're going to resonate with you. Intimate lovers. 